This week, we're going to be finishing up this chrome painting tutorial that we started in last week's video. If you haven't watched part one, I recommend checking that one out first. I'll have a link for it on the upper right hand side of the screen. And of course, I want to thank you for being here, for clicking on this video, and I hope that some of you find these techniques useful in your own work. So with that said, let's get right back into this one from where we left off in last week's video. So what we're going to be doing here is starting with the top. Now, this is going to be kind of interesting because I barely even painted it in. For a part of a painting that's going to kind of be in the background and not that noticeable, you could save a lot of time by just painting the impression of it. And that's what I did here. I just painted in the major values of light and dark. So the first thing that I did here was just paint in the background with some black paint. You could see that I used the stencil that I showed cut out in last week's video. And then I'm just filling in some of the background with black paint. If it's a little blotchy now, that's not a big deal. I can clean it up at the end of the painting. I just want to get that dark paint in there. And so now if you look at the completed painting, you'll notice that there's some bands of dark and some bands of light. And so the first thing I'm doing is using some freehand shields, just lining it up with some of those dark bands and spraying in some black paint. And like I said in last week's video, I did set this one up with a black background. That's going to make it easier. You don't need to worry about masking off the background. You can just line up your shield, spray the paint on. I'll go back over to that stencil just to spray some of this black paint over to the right side, get some of that background in, and just get some separation in between the top here and the black background. There's a thin black band along the bottom, so I'm just going to use a colored pencil like I showed in last week's and just sketch it in. And the really nice thing about colored pencil is that it's so easy to erase on a gessoed surface if you make a mistake or you need to clean it up. So I'll do the same thing along the top, right underneath this highlight, there's a thin shadow in here, so I just sketched it in. Right down the center is a dark thin reflection, so I'll just paint this in with the airbrush. It has some softer edges to it, so the airbrush is naturally going to give you that soft pattern along the edges. Then I'll just glaze some paint over the top of this area so I have something to erase into. But before I start erasing into this area, one thing that I want to add here is this really dark shadow right underneath. You can see in my completed painting on the left side of the screen in the area that I'm circling how this shadow here or this dark reflection just blends into the background. There's no real separation or outline separating the top of this with the actual background itself. The black just kind of fades into this brighter highlight just below it. And so I'm just using a few different types of freehand shields here just to get some separation between this top part of this kettle or teapot and the really, really dark value underneath it, which of course blends into the black background. On the right side of this, there are some very subtle highlights in here. So instead of using a shield, you can see I'm just painting this in freehand. And of course, when I paint in something freehand, it's going to give me a soft edge. So what I'll do is I'll use my eraser to erase into that highlight and sharpen it up. While I have the eraser out, I could also use it to clean up some of these edges. Then I'll come back in with the airbrush and just add in a few of these darker values. You can see there's a thin band in here. So I just painted in with the airbrush freehand. So now that I have those values in freehand, you can see that they're just way too soft. But we have some black paint there, so what I could do is start removing some paint to help sharpen up some areas. I erased out this thin band, this curve at the bottom with an X-Acto blade, and then on the very top left there's a small specular highlight, so I just scratched that out with the blade as well. There's also some brighter reflections on the left and the right side of this top, so I'm just using my ink eraser and erasing into the paint. And you can see how simple this was. I basically just painted the impression of it. I didn't go into any detail. It took me maybe four or five minutes at the most. And for a part of a painting that's not really going to be the focal point, I can get away with this. It just saves me a lot of time and I can focus more of my attention on the areas below it. And so I'll just make a few more passes over the top of this with the X-Acto blade, the eraser, and the airbrush just to help clean it up. And once it's in place like it is now, that's going to be good enough. I will come back to it later in the painting. I usually do this in all paintings, just kind of rework a section that I worked on earlier. But for now, this is going to be just fine. It's in place. We'll start working on the area below it. For a few of these very sharp edges where the black reflection blends into the background, I'm just going to sketch in the edges of them using my black colored pencil. This is just going to work like a guide for me so that when I switch over to the airbrush, I just kind of see where I'm going to be going with this black paint. And then right back over to any sort of freehand shield that's going to fit this curve, line it up and start spraying some of the paint just above it. Now there is a very, very subtle highlight in here, so I'm going to leave a bit of a gap between the dark shadow here on the bottom and the black background. And then with that gap, I'll start painting in the background itself, just spraying this black paint in there. And then as I move into that reflection to where there's a little bit of a highlight, I'm just going to spray less paint. 
This black value in the background just kind of blends in and rounds its way into the lower part of the top of this kettle. So to map in that transition point, I'm starting first with a black colored pencil. And you can see I'm even using a shield to help me get a sharp line in there. And then I'll switch over to the airbrush again with the shield just to maintain that sharp value. Spraying some paint and then just continue this right up along the right side into the background. So for this area in the center, you can see that we're basically just painting in the background first. Just trying to get it in place, leaving that pure white gesso right in the center. And any of the overspray that gets in that area is not going to be a big deal because we're going to be erasing into it anyway. I'm drawing in this very dark value with a black colored pencil. Again, using a shield, just using it basically as a straight edge. And this is just going to give me some separation between the top of the kettle and the kettle itself. Now that we have all these outlines painted in, what I'm going to do is start adding some of the value within the center here. I used my freehand shield to literally block in these shapes. You can see that I added like a square in the center and then two triangles off to the left and to the right. And then for this little shadow on the right, I just line up a freehand shield, spray some paint up above it. Before I go any further, I'm just going to refine the outline surrounding this area that we're going to be working into. Some of the edges just seemed a bit sloppy, so I'm cleaning them up with a colored pencil and a shield. So from here, let's start adding in the details. I'm first glazing a little bit of paint on the left side here, and then immediately switching over to the ink eraser to start pulling out some of the brightest highlights that I see. Within this small section here, I noticed that the brightest highlights were along the edges, right before it transitions to that black background. And so basically what I did here was just draw with the eraser. I erased out the paint along the edges, making sure to overlap the stroke so that I removed all of the paint. This way the highlights are very bright and clean, there's no texture in them. For a few of the softer transitions and gradients in here, I'll just use the airbrush freehand, spray them in, that way I get very soft edges. And so from here, I'm just going to refine a few of these highlights a bit more, just add some more detail into this area. For some of the softer blends, I could use a softer eraser, but for the majority of this, I'm just using an ink eraser, which is sharpened to a very sharp point. Using a very light amount of pressure, just coming into these areas where I see highlights, just removing some paint and again, always making sure to overlap these eraser strokes, especially for the really bright highlights, the ones that are essentially pure white. It's very important not to have texture in those areas. So I just erase over the area a few times to make sure that I remove all of the paint. If I miss a spot in any of these bright highlights, that little bit of paint left behind is going to make it look like texture. So I just go over it a few times to make sure I get a nice, clean, bright value. And so at this point, that's basically it for the top. Nice and simple, nothing difficult about this. But like always, if you're just starting out, it's very important to remember to slow down, make sure you don't rush. I know it looks like I'm going really fast just because I have so many cuts within this video and sections are sped up. But just remember that I too am working slowly. I'm not rushing through it. And so just a few more highlights along the edges with that eraser, and then we'll call this part done. We can move on to the next section. As I start working into the kettle itself, I'm going to work here from left to right. And so if you look at my completed painting, you'll notice that there's a thin dark band along the left side of this kettle. It has very sharp edges and there's a bunch of ways that I can go about painting this in. I could use a paintbrush, I could draw it in with a colored pencil, but just because it's a bit wider, I'm going to use a freehand shield. Now I'm going to start on the right side of this and line up my shield with that graphite drawing underneath. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just spraying the paint directly on that transition point between the panel and the shield. This is going to give me a very sharp line on the right side where the shield is masking off a part of the substrate. And it's going to be softer over to the left. And once I remove the shield, you can see what this looks like. The sharp edge on the right and that gradient over to the left. So from here, what I need to do is two things. I need to sharpen up the left side of this so we get a thin dark band going up along the left side of this kettle. And then I'm also going to have to remove that overspray on the left side to get a really bright highlight in there. So let's start by lining up a shield with the left side of it and then spraying some paint over the top. That gives us that sharp line. And now I'll come in with the eraser and erase all of that overspray over to the left. And at the bottom here, the background just kind of fades into this part of the teapot. So I sprayed in some paint freehand. And then I'll go right back over to the shield and spray some more paint over this darker band again. I really want it to be basically pure black just to add some more contrast into this part of the painting. For something like chrome, extremely high contrast is very, very important. If you want to make anything look bright in a painting, you need to have dark values surrounding it. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing within the center of this teapot. So if you look at my completed painting, I want you to look at the center of it and squint your eyes. 
When you do that, you're gonna see three major values. One really dark one right down the center, then two bright ones, one on the left and one on the right of it. And that really dark value right down the center is one of the most important parts to pulling off the illusion so that the left side and the right side of it look bright. So if you take a look at what I'm doing with the airbrush right now, I'm just adding in the left side of this really dark value. I use the shield to line up with the edges, and then I'm just spraying paint over to the right, using that shield to mask off the left side of the painting. On the left side within this highlight, I'm coming in with my eraser just to clean it up. If I notice any overspray in here or any sort of dark bits of paint, I'm just going to erase them out. Again, I want this highlight very clean with little to no texture in it. There's a band of a light gray value that splits this highlight basically right down the center. So I line up my freehand shield parallel to that dark black line over to the right and then just dust on the smallest amount of paint. You probably noticed there that you couldn't see my airbrush, it was out of frame because I was holding it pretty far back, about a foot away. This way I could just dust on the thinnest value of that black paint. And then what I did was move the airbrush a little bit closer to the surface and direct some of this paint on the right side of this light gray value. That way we get a very subtle gradient within this gray band. It's a little bit lighter on the left side and then it's darker over to the right where it starts to meet up with that really dark black value. Before I go any further, I'm just gonna clean up the left side of this highlight with my eraser. I'll also add in this thin, very bright highlight with my X-Acto blade. In last week's video, we drew this in with a black colored pencil and I said that was gonna be a reference point. So now that we're further into the painting, it's a good time to add it. Within this really dark value in the center of the kettle, you'll notice that there are some vertical lines in here, some brighter values. And because I'm using a negative or a subtractive technique in this painting, meaning I'm not using any lighter opaque values, I'm just using a ruler here to draw in these lines with my eraser. And just remember that there's many ways to go about painting. If you want to use a white opaque paint to paint these in, that's just fine as well. Now I'm going to add the right side of this black band in using my shield. Again, just lining it up with that right side, but this time spraying paint to the left. And you can see that I did not spray too much. I left it a little bit lighter. This way it's much easier to erase into that paint. So I'll go back to the ruler and sketch in a few of these lines as reference points. So now when I glaze some more of this paint over the top to make this area pure black, I'm still going to see those lines there. And then I let the paint dry for about 10 minutes before coming back into it with the eraser. If you let paint dry for a short amount of time, 10, 20 minutes, I notice that it's a lot easier to erase out an even value. Sometimes when you erase into paint that was just applied with the airbrush, it just kind of lifts up patchy. Some areas will remove all the paint and some areas are going to remove a little. So if you just give it a few minutes to set up and dry a little bit, it's just much easier to erase. You're going to get more control that way. And then along the top, I used an X-Acto blade just to cut out this very thin highlight. And then of course, using that eraser to go over a few areas again, just clean up some errors, some mistakes, and also brighten up some of the highlights. On the right side of this kettle, there's going to be another very dark band, just a dark reflection here. And so just like before, I used my shield to define the left side of it. And now I'm using that stencil template just to spray some of the background into the right. To define the right side of that dark value, I'm using a freehand shield, lining it up with the right, and then spraying to the left. And then to darken those values further, I'm just going to go right back over to a freehand shield and spray some more paint on top. The more of this paint that I spray down, the darker the value is going to be. For the right side of the painting within the center of the handle, we're going to have to paint in the black background behind it. Now, of course, you could use a stencil, but I'm just going to go quick here. I'm going to use a freehand shield, and I'll start on the lower side of it. Just spray some of that black paint up toward the center. And then a bit of erasing for this thin, bright highlight along the outer lower edge of the kettle. And then just working my way along the inside of this handle, just using freehand shields, slowly getting one part of the curve to line up with the drawing and then spraying some paint to get an even dark value within the center. Then once the center is done and filled in, I'll do the same thing along the outside contours of this handle. Just line up my shield, spray some of the paint over to the right. And so at this point, you can start to see the entire painting as a whole. When you step back from it, you see the entire thing, and you can see that the chrome effect or the chrome illusion is starting to come together. There's some brighter highlights along the right side of this bright reflection, so just using the eraser here and erasing them out. And so just remember that if you're looking to paint chrome, it's not difficult to do. It's all about the contrast of values, making sure you have those darks and those brights painted in. And of course, like what I talked about last week, those sharp transitions in many places within the painting. 
And so that's where I'm going to wrap this one up for the handle on the right side of the painting. I'm using the exact same techniques that we used in last week's video for the spout. For the sharp black lines, I'm using a black colored pencil to draw them in. And then, of course, the airbrush for the blends and the erasing for highlights. And so I do hope you enjoyed this simple little two-part painting tutorial. And even if you're just starting out and painting or drawing and you want to try a chrome reflective effect, try these techniques out. I bet you'll be surprised at what you could do. And before I go, I want to say thank you so much for the incredibly kind support of the channel members. I'd like to welcome and thank you, Blue, for your generous super thanks in last week's video and joining as a member. So thank you and welcome. And a welcome to Dana, Mamet, Gunpla, and Neil for rejoining at a generous tier 3. Thank you guys all so very much. So I wish all of you guys the very best in your paintings and drawings and make sure you spend a bit of time this week getting some time in to work on your art. It's a good thing to do and it's important so stick with it, keep your head up, just keep going. I'll see you guys back here next Friday.